In section 2.4, we're going to discuss graphical misrepresentations of data. Graphs are such powerful tools that we want to be very careful about how we use them in statistics because visually they can be very arresting and can draw people's attention, but sometimes you can do a really bad job of it. Um, so let's look at some guidelines for what it takes to make a good graph in statistics. So we want to title and label the graphic axes clearly. So provide explanations if needed, include units of measurements and a data source when appropriate. We want to avoid distortion, never lie about your data. You want to minimize the amount of white space in the graph. Use the available space to, the le um, to let the data stand out. If you truncate the scales, clearly indicate this to the reader. Truncate the scales means you cut them off. So for example, if I just look back to this graph, if I basically just eliminated this whole region from zero and I started the graph at 2000, you wouldn't even see these bits because they'd be so low. Okay. Notice, by the way, I, did, I didn't always abide by all these guidelines when I was drawing these axes. For example, I didn't bother labeling this with year because I think it was kind of obvious that it's year. But over here on the vertical axis, um, there was a little typo, but I did label that number of workers. So that way you can see that. Um, let's see, you want to avoid clutter, such as excessive grid lines, unnecessary background pictures, don't distract the reader. Okay. You always, always, always want to avoid three dimensions. Three dimensional charts may look nice, but they um, are often very misleading because if you take an art class, you'll, you'll learn that to make three dimensional things on two dimensional flat paper or flat screen in this case, you have to distort the image. I mean, this is upon which the art of the Renaissance was built when Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo and others started drawing things in such a way on flat walls that looked like they had dimension and depth. But to do that, they're kind of forcing perspective. You don't want to do that in your graphs. You always want your graphs to be flat two dimensional. Um, you do not want to use one more, more than one design in a graphic. So sometimes graphics graphs use a different design in one portion of the graph to draw attention, like they'll put a star over here, but a bar over here. Don't do that. Um, try to don't try to force readers to look at one piece. Always let the data speak for itself or themselves, I should say, because it's plural. And then avoid relative graphs that are devoid of data or scales. So just to take a look back at some of the graphs that I've drawn here. So you can see there's the years, there's the lines, and I've got labels here, a lit title up here. Everything's clearly marked out, and I changed the tick marks so that it was a little bit clearer to read. Over here, I added in the age and percent so you can tell you know, what this is, and so on. Clear tick marks. Everything's two-dimensional. Everything's flat. The only bad one is probably this one. I should have made a couple little fake classes at the beginning and a fake class at the end to officially be a frequency polygon. That's the best, but sometimes that bit gets tossed away, and that's not the end of the world, right? So you can see that my graphs are abiding by these golden rules, right? Even my bar chart, see right there? I've got labels. I've got right here the title and everything, and I don't have too many tick marks. I don't have too few, that kind of thing. So I want to show you some graphs that I've actually received from students for projects, and um, they're kind of so horrible that I want you all to learn from these students' mistakes. So let's look at the first one. Here we have a frequency histogram. Question mark. I love the question mark. So that's not an appropriate title for starters. Um, what is this? What is this referring to? Is this, you know, the number of kumquats in, you know, South America? I mean, what are we looking at here? And the answer is I have no idea because it wasn't appropriately titled. Moreover, I don't have appropriate labels. This entire bottom axis is labeled one. I'm not really sure what that means, but I don't think it's appropriate. Um, and so I wrote that here. I mean, you need limits. This whole key, which is what this is, this is uh, the legend to this graph, it shouldn't be there. You should get rid of it. It's impossible to read. And you should have those numbers be down here on the bottom axis, right? Then you should have both axes labeled. What is this? Is this percent? Is it frequency? What are we looking at here? Um, it, and if it is frequency, what is it? Is it 40 or 50 or is it 50,000 or 500,000? I mean, what are we looking at? And then the whole graph needs a title. You know, what is this? So if this is, I don't know, the average rainfall in, you know, millimeters in different areas or what, we don't know. All right, let's look at another one. 
Now this one is a classic. Um, when you get a graph like this in Excel, it is a red letter or a red flag that you have done something wrong. Um, this is actually a pretty frequent mistake um, that comes from working with Excel. Now, if this is a frequency histogram, as the, well, first of all, it looks like an ogive. See how it's constantly increasing? If it is an ogive, then it should be a line graph. And then you should have your horizontal axis um, should be labeled with upper class limits, labeled with upper class limits. So are these numbers upper class limits? Question mark? Because I don't really know. And then if it's a histogram, as it claims in the title, then there are way too many bars. You only want around five to 20 bars at most. Now, sometimes you might have to push that and go to 22, but that's pretty rare. For the most part, you don't want this many bars. And if it is a histogram, then these should be midpoints and they should be labeled as such. What are they midpoints of? I have no idea. I don't know what any of this data is. I don't know if this is dollars. I don't know if this is temperature. I don't know if this is anything, right? So I need labels, which I put down here. I need titles and I need labels, which are not quite the same thing. Labeling is what are each of these tick marks worth kind of a thing. And this is way too many tick marks and I don't even know what it is. And then I need it to be titled. I need units. You know, are these dollars, cents? What are we looking at here? And similar, the y-axis needs to be labeled. What is this? Is this $60,000, 60,000 people? I mean, and that would help if we had a title for the whole thing and then I would have some clue. So terrible, terrible graph. Needs labels, needs better understanding and it needs way less bars than this. This is a horrible graph. All right, next. What about this one? This is the frequency histogram of income per person. Hey, this person actually has a title, good, and has an income per person, that's good, but that's where the goodness ends, right? First of all, if this is a histogram, then your bars should be touching flat out. And then you need units. Income in what? You're telling me this person makes a dollar? Is that a dollar per year, a dollar per lifetime? What is this? And the answer is, well, you can tell that they don't have units because this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's no way that's actually what these midpoints were. So you should have midpoints, right? Whatever they are. And then you need to, um, oh, the graph does have a title on this one. So we do know what that is, but you need this. This one says access title. So the person never typed in what the access is. Is this 220 people or or what? Or is it 220,000 people? Because a lot of times if it's something like this, it might be 100 people, 1,000 people. And the answer is we don't know because none of this was appropriately labeled. The bars aren't touching. It's not good. All right, now let's move on. Uh oh All right, this is somebody doing three-dimensional. See how they try to force perspective? That is not good. So forcing perspective makes the bar in the back, whichever one it is, look smaller than it actually is. So you need two dimensional, not three dimensional. So you need to flatten this out like this graph was, that's two dimensional flat, right? So you need to flatten this out. Um, if this is a histogram, these should be the midpoints down here. That'd be easier. You can, I shouldn't say that. You could use these, these labels. Um, the horizontal labels are okay, hold on. There we go. They're okay. Um, they're not great because these are such ugly um, numbers, but you know, it happens. But in general, I would try to clean this up a little bit, maybe round these numbers a little bit more in the table that this was generated from. Um, going back to this one, right, right here, we, we don't have those midpoints. So you could be midpoints or the classes themselves, I should say, or the classes. Right. That's okay too, but, but not this one, two, three, four, five business. All right, let's go back here. So we've got the classes, uh, you know, we can live with that, but midpoints, but, but we don't have a label, right? So it's not titled, I should say. So what is this? You know, who knows? We don't, we don't really have any clues. So there's no title into the whole thing. And of course, if it is a histogram, the bar should be touching. So you need to title the whole graph better. Relative frequency histogram is not a title. What is this? What is this of? What is it about? You know, is this, you know, income in the U.S. in 2009? Is this, you know, income in J.C.? Is this income in Jackson County? I mean, we, we have no idea. No, no clue at all. All right, next. Again, I love the question mark. Frequency polygon question mark. Okay, so don't do that. You know, state what this is. Um, is this... I don't know, anything that's in the thousands. So, you know, 
the number of you know zebra mussels in different ponds in Michigan or whatever. Who the heck knows? You know, we have no way of knowing. We have no title on the x-axis. We have no title on the y-axis. We have no title for the chart. So we need titles all the way around. We need um, the horizontal axis, again, is okay, but not great. And the reason it's not great um, would be better with midpoints. The reason it's not great is because it's so messy. Um, right? These are huge numbers, and it's really hard to kind of see what's going on. If you just had midpoints, that would be a lot cleaner, right? As a matter of fact, I'll change that. I'll say it this way. Horizontal axis levels are okay, but they're really messy and hard to read. So I don't really like them. And I say the same thing up here. I changed this just a little bit. So they're messy, hard to read. So I think the midpoints would be much better. Um, not would be or might be, but they would be better. Okay. For both of these graphs, I should say. All right. Then um, if it's a frequency polygon, you're supposed to have fake classes, right, at zero, right, the start and the end. Now, it's not perfect but it would be best it would be best if it had those fake classes right and again that's that's a little bit of a gray one because a lot of people don't really like doing those but for our class it's best to have them in there all right now the relative frequency polygon of income per person all right again with the one two three four five that is not appropriate right they, they should be midpoints or, you know, at the very least classes, but this whole one, two, three, four, five business is not appropriate. Um, he, this person did label relative frequency good, and um, they labeled the income per person, that's good, but they didn't label this well. Income per person, when, where, how, what, what country are we looking at? What year are we looking at? What's going on here? And we have no units. Is this $1,000, $100? What are we looking at here? And don't even get me started on these three dollar signs in the middle. That's just garbage, right? Don't do that. That just clutters up everything. I mean, they do that a lot in newspapers and magazines, but um, we should definitely not be doing that in statistics. It just messes up the whole graph. And again, it would be best if this is a polygon to have fake classes at the beginning and fake classes at the end where um, with zero as the frequency or relative frequency in this case. All right, last but not least, this pie chart, which, believe it or not, somebody actually turned into me once. Um, this is not appropriate at all. You, you can't do all these different sectors. There's 11 different, well, there's more than that, actually. I think there's like 20 in here. This is a huge amount. So there's way, 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 way too many sectors, all right? This data needed to be grouped together, right? So data should be grouped together to form a reasonable five to, you know, 15 groups or so but this is this is out of control here honestly 5 to 15 is even pushing it i'd say 5 to 10 sectors right any more than that and you're really just pushing it um so then each sector should be labeled with a category and a percent all right so what is this section and what percent is that and what is this section what percent is that and so on always label each section and its percentage. We don't actually care so much about its frequency, or its frequency, we care about its relative frequency because a pie chart is all about what's the relation to the whole, the full circle. And overall, the graph should be titled. Don't call it pie chart, question mark. Call it, you know, the pie chart of the ages of, you know, nurses at this blah, 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 you know, that kind of thing. And if you're interested, there's um, a couple different websites here. This one's particularly funny. So um, this is a place that makes nothing but fake graphs. There they are. They will not always be good graphs because the whole idea is to make joke graphs. So they'll, they'll have joke funny graphs up here and you can find them. So it's pretty funny. So for example, the second one, the real life applications of homework. So teaches focus patients, right? teaches time management skills right there, and then teaches how to BS authority figures, everybody else, <laughs> that kind of thing. But again, the point of this place is to do it for fun. They're not trying to actually do a correct statistics graph that we would have to bring to our bosses and or our um, coworkers at some point. All right, I hope that was helpful for the graphical misrepresentation of graphs. And I'll see you back here for more videos in Chapter 3.